This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. You are listening to Wednesday Wonders on the Mutual Audio Network. Be amazed. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. This is a presentation from Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. I know what you're thinking. Did he use six sweeps or only five? Well, to tell you the truth, in all this excitement, I kind of lost track myself. But being this is a 44 sweeper, the most powerful broom in the world, and would sweep you clean up, you've got to ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, gunk? <laughs> Boy, I sure do love my job. I zippity do, especially cleaning up gunk. I love gunk. I will kiss you. Yeah, you want to kiss you. Yeah, you love you so much, gunk. It's the star-studded fourth season premiere of Robots of the Company, or as we like to call it, episode number 401, Night of the Living Gunk, written by Vince Staden, which takes place, oddly enough, sometime during the last episode of the previous season. If any of you listening out there are having issues working out what the hell I'm talking about, then you must seek psychiatric help at your closest mental health facility immediately. Have fun! Oh, yes, I love you so much. Oh, my lovely gunk. Oh, you're so precious. Mm. Ugh, Briscoe, that's disgusting. <laughs> oh, hi. Hi, Shinbib. I didn't see you there. I am. Um, I, I wasn't really going to uh, kiss the gunk. <laughs> I just get lonely and excited sometimes. And I really can't stand the sight of gunk. It's so disgusting. Ugh. You better make that the last job of the night, Briscoe. Shift's nearly over. It's ten to midnight. Anything you say, Shinbib. But I still have one place left to clean. Boffin's Laboratory. Boffin's Lab? Well, you better be quick about it. I'll be in and out before you know it, Shinwa. Ten minutes, Briscoe. The witching hour is here, and this tired little Reba is going to have herself a relaxing night's sleep. See ya. Night, Shinwa! Well, my gunky friend, I'd better take care of you right away, and then zip zippity doo over to Boffin's Lab. Superaneous ectoplasmatic conflation. Um, sure, Boffin. <laughs> Whatever you say, I just call it gunk. And boy, you sure do have a lot of it. I've never seen so much gunk. I've been collecting it, Briscoe, for scientific purposes. There's so much of it, I don't think I'll be able to clean it all up with my sweeper. Hmm. I'll have to fetch the gunkovac. Yeah, the Gunkovac is the perfect tool for this job. I'll be back soon, Boffin. zippity doo Now I come to think of it, it would be the perfect specimen to use as a test subject for my newly invented sentience insemination applicator. I can't do it alone, though. Huh. I'll have to enlist the services of my assistant. Why go? Why go, Bot? Where are you? Here I am, Mount 
Doctor. Why go and put that brain down at once? I told you not to play with brains. Yes, Master. Now come here, Wygo. I need your help with an experiment. I'm going to use the sentience insemination applicator on the superaneous endoplasmatic conflation. The what on the what, Master? The gunk, Wygo. I want to use my new machine on the gunk. Yes, Master. Mind the brain, Wygo. Sorry, Master. No, never mind. It was an inferior brain anyway. Probably belonged to a politician. I didn't think politicians had brains, Master. <clears throat> uh, leave the jokes to me, Wygo. Yes, Master. Now, let's get to work. Carry the sentience insemination applicator over to the superaneous ectoplasmatic inflation. Yes, Master. <laughs> Attach the suction cups to the superaneous ectoplasmatic conflation. Yes, Master. Excellent. Now I'll activate the machine and reroute all systems to maximum power. Um, Master, you are uh, going to plug the machine in? Ah, yes. <laughs> well spotted, Weigel. Um, right. Uh, let's try that again. It, it works! My, my golly, it, it, it works! And, and and look! Look at the ectoplasmatic inflation! It, it, it's moving! It's, it's, it's growing! It's taking on a vaguely humanoid form! This is fascinating! The experiment is a success, Master! You can say that again, Weigel. On second thoughts, don't say that again. I'm still wiping off the spit from the first time. But yes, the experiment is a resounding success. And now look, Weigel. It seems to be forming a mouth. I... I think it's about to speak. Praise the company. It's alive! Good evening, Skika, and welcome to the Bart Wash. Will you be requiring a full wash and clean tonight? Too right I will. My first week aboard this ship has been hard, dirty work. I'm tired and grimy, and I want the full works. I want to be cleaned, scrubbed, scented, massaged, and pampered. I want to come out of here smelling of roses and feeling fantastic. Your wish is my command, Miss Kiko. Please step into the spray area, and I will commence cleaning procedures. Relax and enjoy. Ah, oh, <laughs> that's so much better. I'm gonna wash that butt right out of my hair. I'm gonna wash that butt right out of my hair. I'm gonna wash that butt right out of my hair. I'm sending him on his way. <gasps> Who's there? Is somebody out there? There is an intruder, Miss Kika. Turn off the water, butt wash. I can't see. As you wish, ma'am. That's better. I can see now. There is somebody out there. It's... It's... Where's the company? Ah! We now return you to As the Galaxy Drifts. This week's exciting episode, The Slime Creature Attacks. green slimy monster! Oh no! You mean your mother has dropped in for a visit? Save me, Rusto15! Save me from the slime creature! Stand back, my busty and alluring Jillbart! I shall send this slime creature back into hell! Take that! Under that! Be gone with you, spawn of slime! 
Oh, Rusty, you're so strong and brave. And, oops, I think my clothes are falling off. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. This show has gone seriously downhill. Who writes this garbage? They ought to be ashamed of themselves. Hideous slime creatures, indeed. There's no attempt at believability or any sort of dramatic depth. It's just one cliche after another. Ah, that'll be my piston pizza. And about time, too. I'll be right there, just opening the door. I hope you got the right toppings this time. Wait, you're not the pizza bot. It's a hideous green slimy monster. <laughs> I'll see you, and I'll raise you. <laughs> I don't believe you've got anything, Zimtron. You're bluffing. I never bluff, Sphinx. Except when it comes to overtime and expenses negotiations. Then call or raise or fold, Zimtron. I think you are mistaken, Sphinx, old boy. What are you on about, you rusty series of pipes? You don't call, raise, or fold anything in this game. You don't? Of course not. We're only playing Old Maid. Oh. Well, I don't like this game anyway. It's too late now. You agreed to play, and you've got to finish. So, I raise you another five credits. <laughs> then I raise you another ten. In that case, Sphinx, old boy, I raise you another twenty. Fine. And enough of the old boy, eh? I see your twenty and... Raise you another... 40. You must really have a good hand there. That is for me to know and you to find out, plunger brain. Fine. I'll see your 40 then. Put that in your cigar and smoke it, Frenchie. Huh. <laughs> All right then. All right. How do you play this game again? What? Oh, I don't believe this. You... You mean you don't even know how to play this game? Well, do you, huh? Well, sure, um... Well, do you? I, I, I think it has something to do with finding the cleanest card, right? What? Yes, you know, old maid. I thought the clean card was the surefire winner. Was it stinks? No, I, I, I think that's something else. Oh, the game just sucks. Then what is it? Awful smell. Oh, it's probably just the gunk monster behind you. Gunk monster? What the heck are you talking about? Bot wash when this, this gunkazoid crept up on me and, oh, it's too horrible to remember. Why? What did it do? Did it try to attack you? No, Captain Putch. It was worse than that. It tried to sing. I was listening to my favorite comedy science fiction radio show when this slime monster stole my pizza. I was winning a hand of poker. Old maid. How dare you call me names? That was the game we were playing, you idiotic machine. Why, you... Oh, whatever. And you were losing a hand of old maid, not winning one. I was clearly winning. Was not. I was clearly winning. Was not. <clears throat> I was clearly winning when this, this monstrosity assaulted me. It assaulted you? Oui, he stole my money. It's hideous, and it seen me naked. It must be destroyed. It ain't my pizza. Kill the blob. It's an abomination, and a thief. Kill it! It's a mindless creature of pure malice. Oh, but enough about Sphinx. This gunk horror needs to be hunted down and killed. Whoa! There are far too many names for this creature. It's confusing. We need to pick one name and stick with it. I agree. It's obviously a gunkazoid. No, it's a blob. Or the slime. It! It what? No, just it. You know, like it. The terror from beyond space? That sort of thing. It. It's an it. Or a thing. I I vote for Gunkenstein. It's cool. It's scary. It opens up the opportunity for loads of sequels. Son of Gunkenstein. 
house of Konkenstein. <gasps> Bride of Konkenstein. Good point, I'm sold. Think of the merchandising possibilities. Fine. Then Konkenstein it is. We have to find it before we can kill it. Gee, you're so smart to figure that one out, Sphinx, old boy. Uh, blow it out, your... All right, you two. Knock it off and listen up. You know what kind of captain I am. There are things that should be considered here. Is it ethical to hunt down and kill this life form? Where did it come from? Can we learn from it? As I said, these things should be considered. But I am Captain Putch McNuttich, your fearless leader, and that is not the kind of captain I am. Considerations for pansies. I say let's find this scumbag and blast it to kingdom come. Okay, what the hell? We'll go with GD's plan then. sure about this, GD? Oh, now you question my plan. Look, it's too late for that. We have to sneak up on this thing and kill it. He's right, Captain. It's either kill or be killed, I'm afraid. Oh, my electronic gods. Pigs must be how you say flying. Either that or hell is freezing over big time, because I actually agree with Zimtron. Hey, watch it, Spikey. You're no good and well. My name is Sphinx. Shh. Will you two keep it down? Yeah, and you want to end up as gunk food? Can we take a vote on who gets to be the gunk food? I know that is a crack at me, Toby. Just watch it. All right, either you two pipe down, or I'm going to use this pipe I'm carrying on your heads. Got it? Uh, sorry, Putch. I am not sorry, but I will do as you suggest, Mon Capitan. Good. Now... What the hell was that? Everyone... Absolutely still. Don't move. Not one sprocket. Zimtron, is that you? Uh, well, I'm. I'm sorry. I <clears throat> leak when I get uh, nervous. That is disgusting. Shh. Everybody, be quiet a minute. Oh no, he's coming right for us. We're goners. It just had to end this way, didn't it? I will never forgive you, Box Fuzzies. Wait just a minute, guys. If that's the gunk monster... Um, uh, Gunkenstein, remember the merchandising rights? Shut up, Simtron. What were you saying, GD? Well, if that's the gunk, uh, Gunkenstein in front of us, then what's that in the doorway behind us? Oh, oh, oh my, it's... It's another hideous monster! Oh no! He's coming right for us! We're goners! We are surrounded! Oh, hey guys! Didn't see you there! Briscoe, may I ask you something? Um, yeah, sure boss dude, what's up? What did you just do? Um, let me think. Oh. Uh. This could take hours. Oh, oh, well, I came in, turned on the lights, then sucked up the gunk with my gunk back. The right tool for the right job, that's what I always say. Well, gotta run, zippity-doo. The right tool for the right job, he says. JD, did you by chance know about this gunk back machine? Oh, it uh, must have uh, slipped my mind. Oops. <laughs> uh, now, come on, guys. You gotta see the funny side of this. I mean... You really ought to see your faces right now. Priceless. Priceless, huh? Boys? Let's get him! Yes! Let's grab him! He's toast. Toast? Who said that? Never mind. Let's teach GD a lesson he will never forget. <laughs> uh, now, come on, guys. I didn't mean it, uh, I swear. Uh, I'll be good from now on. Uh, at least, uh, well, I'll try. Guys, guys, go! No. <laughs> You have been listening to the fourth season premiere of Robots of the Company, episode number 401, Night of the Living Gunk, or Gunkenstein, written by Vince Staten. 
which starred in order of appearance. Frisco, Kyle Bors, Shinwipe, Kay Wu, Boffin, Shane Harris, Wygor, Jonathan Patrick Russell, Kunkenstein, Dave Weaver, The Botwash, Cat Waterflame, Kika, Danny Cutler, The Radio Announcer, Steve Anderson, Jillbutt, Danny Cutler, Russell 15, John Morse, GD, Ellie Hirschman, Sphinx, Jim Barber, Zimtron, Jeff Niles, Hutch, Joe Thomas, and Popsicle, Daryl Looney. The Robots of the Company theme tune was composed and performed by Daryl Looney. The incident music was provided by Kevin McLeod. The associate producers were Kay Wu and Vince Staden. The sound designer, post-production editor, script editor, executive producer, and director was none other than Jonathan Patrick Russell. The series of Robots of the Company was created by that scamp, Jonathan Patrick Russell. We interrupt our regularly scheduled credits to bring you this update. We now come to you from DreamRealmSite.com. So join us there on the web from now on. That is all. Now back to your regularly scheduled credits. Take it away, me. You've been unwilling to email us at darkbuilding1 at yahoo.com and we can give a bot's ass. We were scared to death during the making of this audiogram. Join us next time as the fourth season continues with a crashingly good episode entitled The Church of Crisco, which is coming soon from the robots of the company. This is the creditor, as always, asking you to stay tuned. Copyright 2007. All rights reserved. Happy holidays from all of us here at the Mutual Audio Network.